hi. I drew these pictures of worry words, I wanna say almost two years ago, and then promptly forgot that I wanted to sculpt them. And now it's time for us to pull it out and change our lives forever. Okay, maybe not that dramatic. It's fitting that if we're making Japanese food, we are using a Japanese clay. I picked this up off of Amazon. It was expensive, but I'm hoping that the results will justify the cost. Maybe the other reason that I was putting this off is because I want the sushi to look as realistic and tasty as possible. And as we know, your girl kinda struggles a little bit with the realism. But if you struggle with something, you should probably work on it more. God, why do I always have to be doing all this stuff for my personal growth and health? Come on you, let's go have some fun. You look like you need it, I need it. So I went into this pretty blind and I only bought what Amazon Japan recommended I should, which was the clay, a blending agent, and a sealant. This nice Japanese lady is telling me that I can use paint, so that is what I'm gonna do. That nice lady in the video also said you should have a Ziploc bag and some cling film right by you, so that is what I have got. Oh, it's very sticky. This feels very, very different than polymer clay. I have to say blending this is incredibly satisfying. I really like it. Also, the nice Japanese lady said that we should be putting things immediately into some cling film because it will dry out really, really quick. Because this clay was so expensive, I did a couple of test nibs to see how things were going to dry so that I didn't waste a bunch of the clay. I'm gonna leave this to dry for 24 hours, but luckily you fine friends get to see the results immediately, like right now. <laughs> The audio file on this clip corrupted, so I'm gonna give you guys a reenactment. Blah, blah, blah. It's so clear and translucent and squishy. Very impressive colors, wow. And with that testing done, it was time for me to try and find a way to avoid sculpting several hundred or even thousand pieces of rice. I got it in my head that maybe we could make a couple of molds that I could just press some of the base clay into from actual rice so that it would mimic the shape and texture and then I wouldn't have to do all of that extra legwork. This is not how I wanted this to go. You messy, you're not doing the satisfying Pinterest thing I wanted you to do. I'm also going to make kind of a little bar, a little rice bar. Hopefully we will be able to smash some clay in there. I don't know what the bottom part of sushi is called. We're just gonna call it a rice bar. Do you think if there was a rice bar, they would just serve sake there? Get it? Because sake is made of rice. The rice was not sticking to the scrap clay in the way that I had hoped, so I enlisted the help of my trusty friend, the hot glue gun, to come to the rescue and maybe burn me a little in the process. I'm going to be using my favorite, the Mold Star 30. All of our walls are officially up. We're gonna measure this out in two equal parts, mix it together, and then pour it over this and let it rest for 24 hours. I ran out halfway through. Whoa, frick, I just threw that on the ground. <laughs> I ran out halfway through, so I've had to open a second pack. Holy crap, that scared me so. Whoa, this one is already open and I almost poured it all over myself. I am really accident prone. Holy granola. Oh my gosh, we made it. Okay, time to mix this nonsense together. My favorite part is when all the bubbles start coming to the top. Well, I'm gonna leave this overnight and I will open it up again tomorrow. See you then. We put away our craft and rice and came back the next day to crack it open. Let's crack this baby open. Why am I doing ASMR fingers? Oh, one of the flaps is stuck to my finger. How appealing. Get it? It's appealing. Anyways, let's get into this. Oh no, it's just a mess in there. Oh no, I should have worn gloves. I should have worn gloves. Ah, instant regret. ASMR people, pay attention, this is a good sound. It almost sounded like pop rocks. This stuff is so bouncy that there are pieces of it flying Ooh. out and hitting me in my face as I am trying to remove them. Man, I can't wait to press the clay in it and see what's gonna happen. The anticipation is killing me. I'm creating my own crafting cliffhanger right now. Now to test our mold, we are using a little bit of dirty scrap clay because it's gonna get dirty anyways. So that's why I've got some dirty bits here. I instantly regret saying that. Oh, all that build up. Oh, that's a little bit more convincing, but pretty jagged. I wonder what'll happen if we try this. Oh no. I mean, portions of it, yes. It looks more like a brain than it looks like sushi. Okay, so that didn't work. <laughs> 
I'm going to have to do all of this manually, which means that I'm probably going to end up sculpting several hundreds, if not thousands, pieces of rice. I'm gonna do a little test run to see which end result ends up looking the most like rice. Now for our rice comparison, we are going to be using three different types of clay. We're going to be using a white polymer clay, translucent polymer clay, and the Suketu kun clay. Maybe don't leave the knife pointed up at your wrist. I made them all into little sample patties like this and then left them either to air dry or bake in the oven so that they were properly cured. That is a pleasant crafting experience if ever I've had one. I guess that's why I paid $37.67 for just one pack. And with our rice patties all ready, I decided I didn't really know which one looked best and so I asked you guys for help on Instagram. I need you to tell me what looks good because sometimes I don't know. I specifically asked you guys which of these looks like the real rice and I also said feel free to explain why. I did not realize that that was me asking to get Roasted! Even my cousins are in here. Roasting my rice. I'm just kidding, I'm not upset. I actually asked for this. I'm just gonna read out some of these <laughs> for your enjoyment. Number one, two looks like beans to me. Number one looks chewy. Number one, it has the gentle sheen that rice has after it is cooked of that last big of moisture. I feel like that is a beautiful haiku. They all kind of look like brains to me. Number two, because it just looks cute. That's positive. You guys really know your rice. I have not had this much of a response to a poll ever. I'm saying that number one is overwhelmingly the winner. It's the suke kun clay, and one of the issues that I found when I picked it up when it was dry is that the grains are kind of sliding off. I went to go pick this up, and all of it just like immediately exploded. Oh. I just have to figure out how to get it to stick together. It's not sticky and tacky. It's like smooth and of its own mind. Okay, I'm gonna take all of that constructive criticism that we just got on board. I know I was joking earlier, but I do really appreciate it and I don't take it personally. There were a couple of folks in the comments that were worried that I was gonna get my feelings hurt by them sharing their opinion. I literally asked you to tell me what you thought and tell me in detail. So thank you for telling me my rice looks like beans. Otherwise, how would I know? Go make some rice, guys. It's not gonna take 15 minutes. It's probably gonna take 15 hours. God damn. Now one of the unspoken laws of this clay that wasn't shared with me and that I thought I'd share with you is that you should never mix it with acrylic paint because it will absolutely destroy it. It's way too goopy, way too goopy. Maybe if I paint it after. I also started on making our individual grains of rice before thinking that I could take another shortcut or an easy route by using a garlic press. It didn't work out in my favor. Life really wanted this to be hard for me. <laughs> Oh my god. I spent so long cleaning this and the clay is so sticky that it just stuck right back together. It's all stuck together in the paste and now it's all over everything. Oh my god. This clay is a nightmare. There are no shortcuts in this story. You have to roll thousands of grains of rice by hand. Now the whole time up until this point in the video I was kicking and screaming about how many grains of rice that I was going to have to roll. Turns out I actually enjoyed this part of the process. I spaced it out over a couple of days so I didn't end up hurting my wrists or aggravating any of my previous injuries. I don't know if anybody else watches New Girl, but it is in fact my favorite show and I felt like Nick Miller when he goes into that pool and is told he's a giant baby. Big. Yeah. I left the trays of rice out to dry for a couple of days so that they would be the consistency that I wanted and they dried up beautifully. Now I made the body of our beast out of the suke kroon clay before trying to figure out how to tackle another hurdle that I was being faced with with this new stuff. Oh, that's also not something I'm used to. I have to let it, I think, cure a little bit before I can sculpt the face into it. Like I have to let it sit in the air for a minute. Maybe if I treat it like epoxy clay, because epoxy clay, you do kind of have to let it sit out for a moment or two before you can do anything with it. I decided while it was setting up that I would try my best to get the rice to stick to its surface. Oh, it's already falling off. Oh no. Okay, it's time for a couple of reinforcements, I think. Oh, I really hope this works because it's looking so cute already. Now, I don't necessarily know how this works, but when you put the clear goo from the pot onto the other clay goo, things magically stick to it. And I have to thank Amazon Japan for coming in clutch because if they hadn't have recommended it to me in my shopping cart, this project actually would have failed. Okay, let's try the mouth again. It's been about five minutes since the last time I tried. I guess I've got to be even more patient. It's really not holding. Slippery little devils, this is so slippery. Ultimately, I did end up giving up on sculpting the mouths and decided that I would let it dry and paint it on later. Okay, so it has been 24 hours and I have not touched this yet. We will see if this managed to secure the rice a little bit better and whether this has cured properly. Fingers crossed that we can move on to the next step. 
Hey. Nothing is immediately falling off of this. That's about a thousand times better than what happened earlier. <laughs> I'm so excited that we finally got this right. Now that the hardest parts are behind us, it's time for us to have a good day and make a fish fillet. For my first piece of sushi, I am making butterfish, which is one of my personal favorites. Speaking of butterfish, what kind of fish goes well with a peanut butterfish? Why, a jellyfish, of course. I'll try my best to hold off on any more bad jokes this segment. What a distinguished gentleman. <laughs> I melded his little fish hat to his head. Could you imagine how horrible a fish hat would be? Not great and then gave him some little blushy cheeks before adding some of the pigment onto this fish top. Once it had dried later down the road, I went back in with some acrylic and gave it some juicy lines of fat, which doesn't sound very tasty, but when you see it on the fish, it says this is a good fish to eat. And I also decided that I wanted to make a little bit of a garnish for the top. So over the handles of one of my paint brushes, I dried up some clay and then snipped it into little rounds so that we could have some green onions. And with that, our first piece of sushi is done and I will show it to you at the very end. Now that we have finished our butterfish, it was time for us to make him a little friend so that he didn't get too lonely. He's just creepily lurking in the background, watching on. Make me a companion, mother. Okay, jeez, I will. Going forward, the way that I made the little rice log bodies is exactly the same. I would cover them in a little bit of what I'm gonna call this glue or sealant solution, dip them in the rice, clean up their eyes, and then coat them one more time to make sure it would stick together. Every time I close this now, it farts. Now that our base was all ready to go, it was time for us to make some sweet pink shrimp. I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier or not, but the reason that I picked this clay up is because it is relatively translucent, just like real seafood is. The shrimp in particular was the most challenging to sculpt, but I think also in some ways that made it a lot more fun. Because shrimp are so ancient and a little bit primitive, they have so many details in them that you don't really see in nature these days. Okay, well you do because they still exist, but you know what I mean, they've got armor plating and that's kind of not something you see in a lot of animals. And now that our little shrimpy is all finished, it's time for us to move on to my personal favorite sushi, which is the egg sushi or tamago sushi. Don't worry, I will show you guys the glamour shots at the end of the video. I feel like patting them on the head is an important part of the process so that they know you're a good boy. And now that the tamago had been celebrated in the nature that it truly deserved, it was time for us to speed run through the body build. I would like to introduce you all to a box full of my shame, AKA my air dry clay box. About two years ago, I went to Daiso, which is the Japanese dollar store, and I was going to make a video where I tried out all of the different clays and all of the different clay stuff. There were just a lot of things that I wanted to make and I was too ambitious, that's okay. <laughs> I was excited, but I left it all in this box and I was thinking for the tamago topping, it would be kind of a good idea to use some air dry clay because eggs are naturally kind of light and fluffy. Plus, because we are already using a Japanese clay to make the rest of it, why not use Japanese clay for more? This is how you end up with those doom bins at Michael's and something looks enticing and you end up with five of the same thing. I almost went and bought the same amount of Japanese clay online and before remembering that I had a whole shame filled bucket of it just waiting, it's time for me to redeem myself of this bad habit so that I can continue it. Later when I'm like, oh, I'll go buy a bunch of random art supplies, I'll be, you, you used them. You used them for that sushi video. So you could totally buy 17 different types of clay and leave it in your drawer for two years. That's allowed now. <laughs> Times like these where we vindicate those horrible craft habits that I have. Let's go make some eggies. <laughs> I don't know if this got in the shot or not, but this was just lying on the floor over there, looking sad. After discovering the shame bucket, it was time for me to go through all of it and see which of the clay was salvageable. I'm gonna mix these two together. This one is also vaguely squishy and I've got it as a backup if this one doesn't work out. I don't know why I expected it to like hiss or explode or something. That was kind of anticlimactic. It's got a good little color chart here too so that we can see what color combination will make what. Kinda going for this one, so one of these to 20 times this. I am gonna listen to that grid on the back though, the one to 20 ratio. Okay, this is too cute. It looks like an egg, come on. <laughs> the person that's designing the colors are like, oh, you know this eggy looking one? Well, maybe just use like an egg amount of clay. <laughs> egg is the new clay measurement. I'm not gonna lie, I'm having fun. I'm having a lot of fun now. That's an egg measurement, works.
right. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 brain. Do the juice. Give brain. Do good. Do do this, brain. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my gosh. Scary. Oh no. Everything's falling apart. The top still looks right, though. <laughs> that hat is very large, sir. We can work with this. We can work with this. I think if I just don't faff about with this top too much, and I only worry about kind of cutting off the bottom, we'll be okay. That went so well that I'm feeling kind of brave. I was going to do this without putting the little black strap on the sushi, but I really like this air dry clay that I got. Let's go, I'm, I'm feeling amped, this is great. I'm getting fancy here, but I kind of want to add a little bit of blue and yellow in because sushi is not just black. It's green and then it gets all dried up. Now that we had the perfect shade of practically undetectable green, I pushed it through my pasta maker so that we could get a nice flat sheet. That's a thing of beauty. One of the really cool things that I learned after doing a quick Google because I'd had so many troubles with the tops is that you can just cut air dry clay with scissors. How stinking cute is that? Stop, that is very adorable. Oh, I love my job. I love my job. <laughs> this is so fun. I cannot wait for this to be dry so that I can paint the little mouth on it. I'm gonna leave that for you all to see in the final shots, but we're also going to be using some of that leftover seaweed to make our next piece. Now, unlike all of the other sushi that had the rice bodies, this one needed something that was a little bit more firm. I wanted to make the Gunkin style or battleship sushi. I made sort of a hollow shell and attached some eyes to it as well as being able to sculpt my signature mouth into this one. Now, after letting it dry for 24 hours, I filled the cavity in the body with a little bit of the cheaper air dry clay before filling the top with what I'm going to refer to as the caviar of clays, which is kind of fitting because these are fish eggs. And it's also caviar because of how much money I had to spend on it. This is when I finally realize that acrylic paint and this clay do not mix. You can't make this stuff up. It's so clingy, it's ripping my gloves off. Yeah, I'm gonna say that acrylic paint does not work with this clay. It's it's quite literally eating my hand. It's like that ex-boyfriend that just won't leave you alone. So after much trial and error, I can say that watercolors are the preferred method for tinting this clay. And now that we had figured that out, it was literally nothing but smooth sailing ahead. Also, I know that to some, the clay might seem like it's a little bit light, but I knew that it would dry and get darker in the morning, which it did. Because I was also going for realism with this project, I didn't just want to leave this gunkin sushi without a junk in the trunk, or rather some rice in it. I've been brainstorming this for the last 10 minutes and, um, giant crevice is the best I could do. I'm so sorry. Anyways, that horrible moment's over now. Get the good boy pets. Now our final piece of sushi is the red fin tuna. And with everything we learned, this ended up being the easiest sushi to make, except for this part. Oh, I just spilled it all over my hands. Oh. <laughs> Oopie. That wasn't a hard fix, but it sure was funny. Now this is where those samples from earlier came in handy. I actually had one on hand so that I could figure out which combination of watercolors to use. And making the patties themselves was just a sequence of gentle squishing and pulling, which doesn't sound very appetizing, but was satisfying in its doing. I did also paint in some of those tasty lines of fat for our tuna. And I realized even though he was the last, he still needed to feel special. So I made a little bit of wasabi because what is sushi without it, really? I also gave him a couple of these fake little fish eggs that I had lying around because he deserved to feel fancy just like the others. I also did have to make a little bit of ginger because we had some wasabi. What can I say? Thank you. We just had a shop update and every time I make a sale, you might not be able to hear it, but I do actually say thank you every time. Oh, thank you. I do actually say thank you every time there's a ding on my phone when we made a sale. So if you ever purchase something from the online store, just know that there is a Karis somewhere going, thank you. And with the final bits and pieces and my thanks shared, it is time for the final reveal. Let's go. for joining me today. I had so much fun with this project and I think my favorite thing about it is when they are flipped around, they could maybe trick somebody. I've always wanted to have an is it cake moment, but is it sushi question mark? 
If you enjoyed what you saw today and you'd like to support my channel, I hope that you will consider subscribing or by commenting or hitting the like button to help it get shown to more people like you. I also have an online shop where I do have stickers and washi tape of my sushi worrywart designs. And you can sign up for my email list there to get notified of when I might have something like this for sale. We've also got a Patreon community that's just getting started and I've uploaded my first piece of exclusive content there if you wanna see more of me. And by supporting me on Patreon, that also helps me to grow. Thank you so much for being with me here today. Okay, I love you, bye! You are beautiful and I will give you cake.